Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. This is Guinness. We are filming in a new location. I'll explain the story in a little bit, but somebody uh, recently commented to say that they miss seeing the dogs as much since I've kind of been moving around locations. So I figured I will try to include the dogs as much as possible. And Guinness was right here hanging with me as I was getting ready to film. So here he is. He's intrigued because my neighbor is coming home and he can see that out the window. You wanna go find them? Go find them. Okay. Anyway, so basically I mentioned that I have, I've had to try to stand more for work because sitting on the couch with the dogs is kind of ruining my back. So we actually set up a, a real standing desk here in my library and I've been using it today. And I figured this is a fun potential new location to film. So we're giving it a shot and we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I am here to do a book haul revisit. And this is an exciting one because it is the first time I have two years of book hauls to revisit. Now, usually when I do a haul revisit, I talk a little bit about what the books are about. I am not going to do that because, like I said, I have two years of, of book hauls to do. In the interest of time, I'm not going to talk about what the books are about a whole lot, or at least I'm not planning to. I may end up doing that anyway because I'm a chatty person. <laughs> Once I get talking, you can't really shut me up. It's just the way it is. So we'll see how that goes. If you are interested in hearing much more about what these books are about and about the plot and all of that stuff, I'm going to link both of the original book hauls in the comment section or, down, or in the description box down below. So feel free to look there, check it out, and find out more about the books. Now, we are going to start with the books that I hauled in March of 2019 and go from there because those are the older ones. So let's check in on the progress. The first one is Leading Men by Christopher Castellani. This is something that I started not long after I hauled it. If not, I may have already started it by the time I hauled it. I cannot remember, to be honest with you. So I was really intrigued by this book because I'm not going to get too much into the plot, but it is a historical fiction book about Tennessee Williams and his gay lover and how uh, the gay lover is at a certain point was dying of cancer and Tennessee Williams refused to visit him. That's as much plot as I'm really going to get into. And what I was found in the actual book was disappointing. It's not actually very much about Tennessee Williams. There's sort of a fictional character who is created who is actually the focus of the book. And that part disappointed me. Why am I telling you all this? Because I did not finish this book. My bookmark is still in it. So I made it halfway. Uh, I made it to page 160 out of how many pages? About 350. And I keep it around. And I don't really know why. Because I don't think I'm going to be getting back to it. So basically, since I put it down, I've periodically been calling my shelves to find stuff that I can donate or bring back to my local used bookstore and trade in. And this book has come up a lot. And for some reason, I keep holding on to it. Because I think it goes back to the idea that I was really intrigued by the premise of it and I wanted to like it. I believe this was option for either a series or a film adaptation. And I think that could be interesting. But by and large, it's I, that I really wanted to like this more than I did. So... I don't think I'm actually going to get back to it, but I guess hope springs eternal. <laughs> so this is probably not something that's really long for my bookshelves. I probably will end up trying to take it to uh, and trade it in at my local used bookstore. We'll see. But for now, I still have a little bit of you know wiggle room on my shelves. I'm not I'm not dying for the space, so I, I'll continue to hold on to it for now. But at some point chickens are going to come home to roost, whatever that means for this book. The next one is Night of the Iguana by Tennessee Williams. And you can see how intrigued by this book I was, because even as I started it, I started seeking out other things by Tennessee Williams. And this was a play of his that I have never got, I had never read and still have not read, which tells you I still haven't read it. So since March 2019, I have not read The Night of the Iguana. But I think it's something I still want to keep around. I mentioned a couple of videos ago, maybe in January, maybe in February, that I really get suckered into the idea of library builders, books that you will have on your shelf that I kind of make a good collection or that you might read someday, kind of like aspirational books to, to include on your shelf. 
and this is definitely one of them. It's something that I would probably pick up if I want to read something really very quickly. You know, I could read a play very quickly. So I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to keep it. And I do enjoy Tennessee Williams' work. So I will hopefully be getting to The Night of the Iguana at some point, but I have not yet. Then we have Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I did read this one, and I really liked the process of reading. It had been a while since I read a book and did like a whole deep dive. You can see I used an index card as a bookmark, and I took a lot of notes, and I even started noting down certain times, I'd like every time I, I would have like a category <laughs> and then I would note every time it came up throughout the book. For instance, the topic, uh, the concept of being genuine or even the word genuine, I noted down all the times that it started appearing. I noted down anytime the idea of performance in everyday life came up, things like that. So I think Sally Rooney does a lot of really smart things under the surface of this book. What she, the world that she has structured and the way she has structured it is fascinating. It's really interesting and you can see all of the work that goes into it. Did I like the book? No. <laughs> I liked everything Sally Rooney did, but the story itself felt really familiar. Not that groundbreaking to me. And I, so I, I, there's half of this book that I did enjoy, but it's the half that involved the process of reading and the work that Sally Rooney was doing, not the book itself. But I have read it. The next title we have from 2019 is The Best We Could Do by T. Bui Bui. I always mean to look up the pronunciation of this author and then I forget before I start recording. I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> this is a graphic novel, obviously, and I did read this and I enjoyed it very much. In fact, at the time I did my haul revisit last year, I did not have my copy of this because I had loaned it to my neighbors and they were reading it and they loved it as well. Fantastic book. Definitely recommend this. It's an immigration story. It's a story about the Vietnam War. It's a story about motherhood and generational family trauma, which if you follow along, you know is something I am fascinated with. So I would definitely recommend The Best We Could Do, and I read uh, this one. The next book is something I don't have anymore, but I did read. It's Speak No Evil by Uzo Dinma Awela. Now this is a shame because I really was looking forward to this book, and I read it for Pride Month last year in 2019. In June, I usually try to read LGBTQ books, and last year, because of everything going on in the world, I wanted to prioritize black queer stories and stories about black queer people or by black queer people. So Speak No Evil seemed like a really good fit. Part of the problem with this is that it was presented to me as a novel about a man who uh, who is gay and his father finds out that he is gay and sends him back to Africa where the, where the father had immigrated from. And he goes to sort of like a conversion camp. That is in the book, but it's actually a really small portion of the book. The majority of it actually has to do with the main character and his female friend who is white and the sort of miscommunication between them that sort of shatters their friendship and leads to, you know, tragic circumstances. And that was really disappointing and I thought that the original thing that I had been told that the book was about would have been a lot more interesting. And I just didn't like what the book is and the way it was structured. It felt like it took the story away, which is interesting and disappointing. So after I read it in June of 2020, I took this book to my local used bookstore and did actually trade it in. So that's Speak No Evil by Uzadinma Owela. The next book is Cloud Bursts by Thomas McGuane. Now this book I got is sort of like a library builder thing, but not quite because I don't think, you know, a lot of people I would say probably haven't heard of Thomas McGuane. However, this, these are short stories that are set in the state of Montana. The New York Times happened to do a really great post about this on their New York Times book review Instagram account around the time it was released in paperback. And I happened to walk into my, what, my local uh, independent bookstore and they had this on display because obviously it is fiction set in Montana and I live in Montana. So that's kind of a big deal for them. So it's something I want to read. I don't really plan to get to anytime soon. It's very likely that at this time next year, I'll be doing another book haul revisit and will still be telling you that I have not read Cloud Bursts by Thomas McGuane. But I am still really interested in reading it, and I would love to read read a lot more about or books about or in Montana. 
that's something I really need to do. Like Stephen Ambrose wrote a book about called Undaunted Courage about Lewis and Clark. Well, I live along the trail that Lewis and Clark took on their uh, path. So I feel like that would be something that would be really interesting. I, I, I want to do more, more literature of our place. The only book I can really talk about <laughs> is A River Runs Through It, which was is set in Missoula, Montana. But I haven't read. I have seen the movie. So I feel like I need to do a little bit of homework about literature set in my place. And this will help me do that at some point. The next one is The Largesse of the Sea Maiden by Dennis Johnson. I read Jesus' Son ages ago and remember really liking it. And I had tried to read Tree of Smoke, Dennis Johnson's like big novel but I had the flu, and I not reading it for some reason felt like a fever dream, so I put it down and never got back to it, and then lost my copy somewhere along the way, which neither here nor there. And then eventually he uh, was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize in the year that they did not actually have a winner. I think that was 2012 for Train Dreams, which I did read. He's a writer I really enjoyed. This one, I believe, was published after his death, and it's a collection of stories. So I would like to get to this... I have no rush to get it. Again, it's sort of like a library builder thing. And one of the, something I really want to get back to is, in fact, short stories. Because I feel like, I, I really enjoy them. I know people have problems with short stories, but I really like them. And these just seem like two really good collections to have around in case I do feel like I'm in the mood for short stories. So I haven't read either one of them, but, but I'm going to keep them. And you, I'm going to frame them as library builders because to me that's what they are. And I would like to read them. The final book in my March of 2019 book haul was Spectacles, a memoir by Sue Perkins. If you're a fan of The Great British Baking Show, you know who Sue Perkins is. She's one of the two original hosts of the show with her comedy partner Mel Giedrich, and I'm a big fan. I frequently re-watch seasons of The Great British Bake Off on Netflix, and it just makes me happy. <laughs> And I particularly love the seasons that had them on it and Mary Berry. I, it's really good. So I did read this and I enjoyed it. I do feel like a common problem with celebrity memoirs is that they're very honest and fun when somebody is young. And then when they start their career, they start feeling very guarded and a little bit of, there's a little bit of political spinning to try to frame things in ways that are not necessarily dishonest, but are very guarded. Like, she talks very openly about her relationships as a child and as a teenager and all that stuff, but as soon as she's a, an adult and is embarking on, say, lesbian relationships, things don't feel as open and honest, and the book starts to feel like it's missing something. And things do kind of happen out of order, so it's a little difficult, because, like, in one chapter she'll talk about the death of her dog, which... really difficult for me. But then in the next chapter, the dog is still around. And it's, it, it kind of disorients you a little bit, and not necessarily in a good way. So I enjoyed this, but I didn't love it. And yet I did, re I did read it, I enjoyed it, and I'm happy I did it, and that I have it on my shelf because I am a Great British Bake Off enthusiast to my core. So this is actually a book haul that I did okay on. I At the time I did my revisit last year, I had read four books out of eight. I only have seven of them here. And then since then, I have read five out of eight. And unfortunately, the fifth one is Speak No Evil by Uzodinma Awela, which I don't have anymore. I unhauled it. So nothing in here that I'm going to unhaul. No really difficult decisions to make in this one. And actually, five out of eight is really not bad. So I just really need to make sure I get to The Night of the Iguana Cloud Bursts, and The Largest of the Sea Maiden. But again, I don't have any rush to do that. And I guess you could say I've read four and a half if you really want to be strict about it. So at some point I need to make a decision about whether or not this will stay in my library, but at least I've I've had some experience with the, what it's like to read it and what the story is like. And so I, I have a little, I'm a little more informed about that one. It's not too bad. So all in all, this is not a bad book haul because I've done most of them in the time, in two years since I bought these. The other three, maybe by this time next year I won't have read them, but I am still happy to have them on my library as options. So let's start moving into my the books that I brought into my library in March of 2020. The first one is Deacon King Kong by James McBride. And I have read this. I read it in, I want to say July of 2020, so scratch this one off the list. This was actually sent to me by Steve Donahue. Thank you, Steve Donahue. And 
I really like James McBride. I liked parts of this book. I thought it was a little too big. I do think this has a real good shot at winning the Pulitzer Prize next month. But I thought it was a little too big, a little too messy. Um, there were so many different stories that it started to feel a little bit scattered to me. And I really wish it had just kind of focused in a little more. It also was not exactly what I was expecting. But that can be, that can be something that is exciting and really fun. In this case, it felt like the directions that the story went... I, we're not as exciting to me, and I don't really want to get into it but because I feel like getting into it would be sort of like a spoiler. So part of it is that the way it was framed to me is that you have this character, Sportcoat, who shoots a drug dealer in his town, and it's about the ramifications of that. And that happens. However, when it's framed like that, I assumed that the drug dealer died. He does not, and that's not a spoiler because it happens in the first chapter. And the shooting is an accident. So... It's, it's interesting. This is really about the community than it is about a straight narrative following that incident. It's, but that's part of what I think is the problem. It's so fragmented in that it's following a community that I wanted more of a through line. And there is, but not enough. It's just a little too unfocused. So that's Deacon King Kong by James McBride. The next one is also something Steve, uh, Steve Donahue sent me. It's Collected Stories of Laurie Moore. I have not gotten around to reading this one, but kind of, I mentioned I really enjoy short stories and I want to have them around, and I've never read Laurie Moore, so I'm really excited to get to this chunky, chunky brick of a story collection at some point. And again, thank you, Steve. It has an introduction by Lauren Groff. Haven't done it. Really want to do it. Looking forward to it at some point. Next is something that I did read and did not like, The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. That was a buddy read that I did with Britta Bowler in April of 2020. So just a month after I hauled it, I read it and I did not like it. And Britta, Britta did not like it either. And to me, it was just a nothing burger of a book. That's how I described that. And I apologize to anybody who likes it, but I just didn't, I, it felt like a first novel and it's not. It felt like it had these big ideas and didn't quite know what to do with them. It also kept repeating ideas that didn't need to be repeated. Like, I got the point the first time, and that was kind of annoying. And it just, again, like, it, like Deacon King Kong, it felt a little bit unfocused to me. Like, there are three different parts, and each part could easily be its own book. And actually, that you could remove the middle section of the book entirely and not necessarily lose anything, which is a problem. It's a big problem. So, I read it, did not like it, and traded it in at my local used bookstore. And that's The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. No regrets. Next is Later, My Life at the Edge of the World by Paul Lisicki. This was another gift from Steve Donahue, so thank you, Steve. And uh, I did read this one. I read this later in the summer of 2020, somewhere around that zip code. And I, I, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't love it, but I really liked it. So this is about Paul Lisicki's life. He goes to grad school in Provincetown. So it's about him sort of finding himself, finding his community, and coming out and becoming his own person living in the shadow of AIDS, which was a huge, the epidemic was still raging at the time. And so it's about becoming comfortable with yourself and your sexuality in a time when you feel like you have to be afraid of your sexuality. And that part of the book is really fascinating. I enjoyed this a great deal. And next we have Clean This by Garth Greenwell, also sent to me by Steve Donahue. So big thank you to Steve Donahue for this entire book haul revisit from 2020. I have still never read a Garth Greenwell book. I have his other book, um, one second. What Belongs to You, it's on the shelf right there, so I could look at, actually, I probably could have just looked at it right here. Yeah, What Belongs to You. Oh, well, I got the title of it one way or another. So I've still not read either one of those, and I really want to. I had originally been planning to pick this up in June of last year. Again, I like to read LGBTQ books in June for Pride Month, and I had originally been planning to do this, but when I decided to prioritize black queer stories and black queer authors, I had to put this to the side a little bit. So I'm still wanting to get to it probably June of this year, barring circumstances that make me ch choose something really specific for my Pride Month reading, but very much looking forward to reading this as well. Then we have The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. I've still never read a Yoko Ogawa book. This is the final book that I got that's part of this Vintage Japan series that is just absolutely stunningly gorgeous. I love them. 
Look at those little baseballs. They're just, it's just beautiful. So I had gotten a couple of others. This was the final one. I, uh, I've had, I think, two of them in my book haul revisit from last month, and I think maybe two in the one before that. Don't quite remember, but they're beautiful. They're pretty. Still haven't read it. So looking forward to reading this. I need to read something by Yoko Ogawa. I really, really, really need to get on that. By the way, this is translated from the Japanese by Steven Snyder. I feel like I should mention that. And I am very much looking forward to getting to it. It's only small. It is 180 pages. So hopefully this is doable in this year because I really like, this is something I would like to get to fairly soon. Next is another fail. <laughs> I'm not doing as well with the 2020 ones. It's Writers and Lovers by Lily King. I got this because I read Euphoria, which was Lily King's previous book novel, and I enjoyed that. I didn't love it, but I really liked it. And it, there were parts of it that I thought were really smart. So I've always been curious about what she would do next. So I grabbed this, and then since it was released, I've heard very mixed to negative, definitely skewing negative, uh, reviews of this. And that's kind of given me some hesitation. I think at this point, I'm more likely to try to read this or listen to this on audio than I am to pick up the physical book. So... I'm still interested, but this is actually probably a candidate for an unhaul at some point. But because of the negative things that I've heard about this book, the urgency to read it is gone. And that's kind of a problem. So this is kind of in limbo. And we'll see. At some point this year, I'll probably be making a decision. Uh, when I do my book haul revisit for March of 2022, if it's still here, this is a prime candidate for removal. Just like the next book that was on this, it's The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. I know a lot of people really like Eric Larson, and I do like Eric Larson, but I always have some nitpicky thing with his books, like with The Devil in the White City. I really enjoyed it. I thought both of the stories were interesting, but it did kind of bother me that they don't really connect, and he sort of tries to make a connection by saying that one storyline is the good of the Chicago World's Fair and the progress that was happening in the United States and the world at the time, but also the really dark aspect of it, this serial killer who was preying on people at the World's Fair. But they still never really connected beyond that sort of vague, you know, statement of Eric Larson's. And then I read In the Garden of Beasts, and it felt like he was so caught up in everything that the, that the daughter was doing, and that comes back into play here, because while his story about Churchill becoming prime minister and trying to gear up the nation to fight the Nazi menace is fascinating. It still feels like Eric Larson is way too interested in the social lives of Churchill's daughter and not always in a way that's flattering to them. It feels like a little bit judgmental. So to me, that was a bit of a problem. So I did read it and then I traded it in. So it is not part of my library anymore. And I'm still interested in, in other Eric Larson's book books. I have Dead Wake right here on my shelf. I don't know when I would be getting around to it, but I'm still interested. I think he I think he's a good writer. I like his approach. I like his style. I just always have some nitpicky thing about the books. And there it is. Now, when I did my book haul for March of 2020, I actually forgot The Mirror and the Light. In my very next video, which happened to be my book haul revisit for March of 2019, I threw this in and said, hey, I, said, hey, I forgot to mention that I got this book. So I kind of saved it. So The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel was supposed to be part of that revisit. But if you look at the video down below, you won't hear about it. But I did actually get it in March of 2020. Just trust me on that. Now, I'm finally getting around to this now because I am a groupie, I mean groupie, for the BookTube Prize, and this is one of the books that I've been assigned, and I've really got to do some work to finish this by the end of this month. I'm working on it. Can't, because I'm reading it for the BookTube Prize right now, I can't tell you what I'm thinking about it, but I will say I was very excited about it. I have read, I don't actually have a copy of Wolf Hall anymore and I don't know what happened to it, but I do have a copy of Bring Up the Bodies and I enjoyed both of those books and was really looking forward to finishing up the trilogy of books about Thomas Cromwell. So in terms of my 2020 book haul, I hauled nine books and I've read four. It's not quite 50%, not bad, 
but not great either. And like I said, most of these, if I haven't read them, I still want to. So that's good. Writers and Lovers is really the only one that's kind of in a precarious place where, again, based on the feedback I've gotten on it, it doesn't feel like something I am all that eager to get to anymore. So that could be a candidate for removal at some point. And then, of course, by the end of the month, I will actually have five out of nine. I just, I can't count it right now. So let's go with it because it's for the book two prize. So I need to finish this by the end of the month. And let's just say five out of nine. That sounds better. Is that cheating? I don't know. But like I said, I need to finish it by the end of the month anyway. So let's say five out of nine. Sounds better. So Writers and Lovers, Clean This, Lori Moore, and... Uh, the Housekeeper and the Professor are the ones I really need to get to. Writers and Lovers is the one that's kind of in limbo. Cleanness I might be looking to uh, in June for Pride Month reading. Lori Moore I, is Library Builder. I'll get to it at some point. Housekeeper and the Professor, yeah, I definitely want to read that. I'm hoping I will get to it this year. So, that's my first big, big book haul <laughs> revisit where I cover two different years of book hauls. I would love to hear your feedback. If you've read any of these, if you, there are any that you think I should avoid, if there, you want me to spend more money on things that you would recommend based on these, let me know in the comment section down below. I really appreciate your time. As always, I feel like I need to just throw that out there, especially if, if you follow along and subscribe, it really means a lot to me. And if you're just watching this one video and you don't want to follow along, that's fine. I appreciate it anyway, especially if you've made it to this point. And Jamie is starting to bark, so I'm going to take that as my exit cue and just tell you again, thank you, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.